Okay, polygamous marriage is a form of a marriage wherein a man gets married to more than one wife. And it is prevalent in African tradition, Cameroon in particular, in royalty. Polygamous marriages, it seems to, it's considered an obligation. Uh, it is obliged for a phone to get marriage, more, married to more than one wife. Now, out of royalty, now there is there are no there are no restrictions. Uh, if you go to a particular setting of a fondom, the reason why they get married to to many wives is just because it's an essential link. It's something they inherited from their fathers. Exactly. You understand? So it's just part of us. It's just a culture that they, they grew in and they inherited the culture now. So that's it. It's just an essential link. The inheritance of uh, the, all the Wudukum fondoms out of which I am one is an inheritance of uh, polygamous culture. According to the tradition of the Wudukum people, the strongest person in the community is the fond. And he cannot be strong without a biological family of his. This was uh, initiated, they had it before the advent of Christianity. And they lived well. It is Christianity that came and provoked monogamy. Provoked monogamy. You see, the reason why this polygamy was well adopted and accepted by the people is because of the warring nature in the move by the time tribes were moving. If a phone, a traditional leader, had in his own biological family, he wouldn't have the complete support he needed. So it was also an army. The queens, the children knew that they had somebody they had to protect. Uh, let me begin from uh, my stand, and we, which is what the Bible also holds concerning polygamy. Polygamy is, is not God's standard for marriage. That's the very first thing. God's standard for marriage is monogamy. One man, one woman. So in God's Mathematics, one plus one is one. As a Baptist, we preach that and uh, we do our best to put that into practice also. Yet, I will say you will find cases of polygamy who are Christians in the Baptist church. So though the Baptists, they, they don't hold to, to polygamy and uh, being a Christian institution that seeks reconciliation to reconcile the lost world back to God, we will not bypass that polygamous case without preaching the gospel too. And uh, when that happens, they, they will now be mature and know how to live. There are cases where they cannot say, let me divorce this one now because the Bible has there are cases where they just need to live that way, live with the scars. It's like you have a wound that is healed and the scars are there. But the good thing in such a case is that if those people continue well in their faith, they will make heaven. They will make heaven. Polygamy 
just like monogamy is legally recognized in Cameroon. And um, there are no different statutes regulating polygamous marriages and monogamous marriages. They are regulated by the same statutes. Under customary law, there are, there are, certain, like, there are certain conditions of which a valid marriage, a valid polygamous marriage is celebrated. So we have the concept of age, the consent of the parents. And then another important element also will be the consent of both, of both spouses, you know. We must agree to contract the marriage, whether polygamy or, or monogamy, we must agree before getting into marriage. But this issue of age also will also differ. Reasons being that there are some cultures, example again, I will still go again into some, if you go to some remote areas, you will still see that there are girls who are giving out in marriages without their consent, maybe some of them, at the age of 12, their father now will force them to even go and be a fifth wife somewhere. That is now where the gender issue will come up because most of these girls will not be able to go to school. You understand? And at, 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 at the end of the day, most of them, their lives just end like that. It's like building a defensive wall around you. That is why, well, that's what most African traditions and Cameroon in particular, the cultures, they look at it. Cameroon is a, 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 a society where farming is predominant. So they believe that having polygamous or, or, or contracting polygamous marriages, bring more children, bringing more wives into your home. At that stage, you, you have labor force. Outside the outside royalty, people want it for to like to boost up their status. They want it as a means of empowering themselves. They want it for economic reasons which we have just exemplified. Um, but inside royalty, it is just like an obligation. They are milling nuts, palm nuts. Yeah. Some are removing the nuts from the cast to the mule. That is the mule. Then, this is the kennel. They've selected the chaps, that is the chaps. That's the chaps behind you. Yes. Then this is the palm kennel. Yeah. So the children are busy. The one milling, they are there. The one collecting the meal to bring here, so that they select the chaps from the from the palm kennel. That's him going with the palm nuts. Yes. He's pouring inside the meal. Uh huh. Yeah. You see, this is the advantage of the polygamy's home. The ch oh, see the children, there are many of them doing the milling. See the population, all of them busy. If it was one wife, how, how, how many children will do that? Yeah. The process will take long because the children will be few, but now that we are many, the work will go easily. That's it. They will start the selecting. There is envy, which results sometimes to killings, maybe because one is being favored to the detriment of the other. It also affects financially. Sometimes, at the early stage, it can be it can be appealing, it can be good to say, wow, the wives are there, come. But at some point, financial responsibility will be challenging on the man. I live from the polygamy home. My father was having two wives. So, maybe monogamy, they also have their advantages, but most of the advantages in monogamy are selfish. But if we look on the other side, that if all women to have uh, uh, all, all men are to have just one wife. Where will other wives, uh, women go to? What the, the Queen has just said, polygamy is also solving a problem. Polygamy is solving a problem because they are able to keep a number of people together in a community, which even if they speak against them, but they are able to manage. If they could keep all the women, irrespective of the status, we have a better country. Instead of pretending that you have only one wife and then 
because you are sympathizing with the other ones, you have five outside. You see, you see the danger in it. The economy is spread, and it cannot be controlled. The legacy is also spread, and cannot be controlled, because in the end, I will, I will not have, I will not go out fetching children from the other homes to come and to come and take the legacy of my palm oil, my palm trees, or my fish, or my, my, my wife's cassava, or yams. You see what I mean? So, here we are, it is a 50-50 thing, but I think the polygamists are more responsible and they guarantee the future of the country than the monogamists. The good monogamists are selfish, they are selfish people. Except the monogamists who decides to adopt as many children as his economy provides. And how many of them will do that? Most of the monogamists are very rich people. We agree. But how does their wealth help us? Before the polygamist rises out of bed, he's already calculated how he's going to share. He's one kilogram of meat. There's always a challenge for women to empower themselves in a, in a polygamous setting. The reasons being that, you know, in a polygamous setting, there are so many women and there are so many children also involved. And there is this principle of partiality. You know, a man's heart cannot be, cannot be, cannot be equally divided into ten parts. You understand? It will always, you will always find in a situation where maybe the man will favor this woman more than this woman or favor this child more than this child. So in this setting, you see that it will limit the women, the women tremendously. If you go to many chief palaces, if you go to many fondoms, how many women there are educated? How many, how many women there are eligible and, and can fend for themselves? The very first time I listened to that, it was like a surprise to me. I was with one of my senior colleagues. These people went up, monogamy or polygamy, they said polygamy. And we what is like, is this a reality or a dream? In, in a time like, like this, in an era like this where people are, are gaining wisdom, people are learning, and people want to correct their mistakes. It's like some people consciously are still getting into that. Wow. And they can issue you the certificate for that polygamous marriage, but the church that stands for the truth will not go ahead to solemnize such a marriage in church. The Western world, in the Western world, we are part of our experience. We are even the civilized and well-placed people in the Western world. I've been to the U.S. and I know that. Mm. You have the ability of being married to contracting 10, 15 contracts during your lifespan. That's with, with 10 different women. And perhaps having 10 different homes in 10 different stages. Stage, stage. That's transferring if your business can permit you. That is total instability of a family status. Which you cannot never convince a Cameroonian poly polygamist or a grassland polygamist that it is a healthy lifestyle. A call for action will be that uh, we should sensitize uh, uh, chiefs on the advantages and disadvantages of polygamous marriages and particularly we should sensitize them to also getting a marriage certificate because the law does not uh, uh, the law does not deny you from having a marriage certificate you can get married to three wives and you and, and all those three wives uh, uh, you have uh, their marriage certificates you understand so it's very very important a marriage certificate is very very important reasons being that it protects you first the woman and you know problems crops up in polygamous families more than in monogamous families. There's always a lot of problems. Where, where the parents die interested, that means without allowing any will to, 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 to say that, okay, you have this one, you have this property, you have the car, there is always chaos. So they need to come to lawyer at this time. So they can come to lawyer, when the man is still uh, before contracting the, ma the marriage, they come to lawyer to prepare a will. They come to lawyer even when the man dies without a will. In fact, so that the lawyer 
can now advise them as to the nature or the kind of administrator to choose to administer the property and eventually share it so that there shall be no, no hitches here and there, no misunderstanding and stuff like that. That's when you have.